Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome back to another YouTube video for We Go Podcast. I'm your girl, Taria. Thank y'all so much for taking some time out to come hang out with your girl. I'm just gonna say this. I see your comments and I try to reply back to all the comments that I can. And I'm so grateful for the love that y'all show me. And also just being interested enough to comment back. I truly appreciate that. I've said it before. I'm going to continue to say it throughout however long my my YouTube journey may be that I'm appreciative of y'all. I don't take for granted y'all coming here, subscribing to the channel, watching the channel, sharing the channel, liking the channel, commenting. <laughs> for real, I, I really don't take it for granted. I appreciate y'all so, 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 so much. And I just really want y'all to know that I'm not a creator that typically I know sometimes I'll put stuff out and then if, because of life got stuff to do I can't all I'm not always like on or interacting but I'm not one that just wants to put out content and then not have any interaction with y'all I love our conversations our chats our tussles even sometimes um I, I just love all that so thank y'all so much y'all so I came off the road I'm taking my little break I just had me a five guys little burger which I needed to get my energy up. I realized I was feeling tired. I don't think because I was sleepy, but because I hadn't really eaten a lot today. So I got me my five guys little hamburger. Now, when I did my order, let me ask y'all this. I, this is my order. I said, hi, I would like a little hamburger. Did I say hamburger? Or did I say burger? I think I said little hamburger with only ketchup, A1, and barbecue sauce. She said, do you want cheese? And I said, no, hamburger. I feel like I said little hamburger. So why would you ask me if I wanted cheese? Cause I would have said little cheeseburger. But now that I'm slowly replaying it back, I might've just said little burger, but I swear I said little hamburger because I was looking at it on this, on the little order thing. Anyway, it was really, 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 really good. Who I feel my energy. Whew, like when Popeye eats, spinach I feel my energy and my strength coming back but so I came up off the road because I wanted to get in some get into some things with you guys that I was supposed to come talk to y'all about last night but here we are so first up we have all heard the news about Glorilla and her DUI well I just saw the video and I thought I'm gonna need y'all to see it too for those of y'all that have not seen it I was like okay so let me go ahead and Share my screen. Look, I'm saying all this stuff and still ain't got it ready. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, y'all. So let's watch this video. Wait, let me make sure that y'all were going to be able to hear it. Don't be all in my stuff. Nothing interesting anyway. But here we go. I should have selected that before I shared the screen. But let's get into it. Do you know who I am? No, I you said an opening. I don't an opening wait. The beginning is kind of low, y'all. So you heard Gl Glorilla say, Do you know who I am? And she's saying no. And so Gl Glorilla's like, Oh, so you never heard of me. So it will get louder, but this beginning part is a little low where they're just trying to figure out who she is. Oh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, but yeah, it's okay. I'll wait on you. Enlighten me on who you are. I'll wait on you. No, because you still don't check on me. You don't matter who I am. You on you. I'm not checking 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 <laughs> Are you on a TV show? Sorry, are you going to tell me the TV show she's on? Because she's not telling me. Okay, artist. Am I just going to have to play games over here? You just don't tell me? What, what is it going to help me out? But don't think you're But exactly. now you've got me curious. It's not going to help nothing, but it's going to help. You can't just tell me that. And then not. <laughs> Y'all, Glorilla thought if they knew who she was, she would be able to get off because 
notice she keeps saying, how is it going to help me out any if I tell you who I am? Ciao. I'm so home. Like, I feel on myself trying to get to a restaurant. I got to on my hands. Yeah, you might gonna help me now. Okay. You still gonna pee on me, and it's not just like going to be for the last. It's not enough weed for me. Okay, boy. So my girl, step out, and then walk to the front of my car. Okay. I told her I had to pee, so that's why my pants, my flowers. Okay. Just go to. She said she had pee on her hands, y'all. I'm just gonna check you out. Are you on any medications? Do you have any, any issues? I have to stop and say this, y'all. When I saw her here, look at her right here. You know who I thought she looked like? What's the girl's name? My lip gloss is cool. My lip gloss is popping. What you know about me? What you, what you, what you know about? That's who she looks like. That's the same girl that went on stage with Jay-Z and, B and, and Alicia Keys, right? And just stood there. I cannot think. Lil Mama, tell me she don't look a little bit like Lil Mama right here. Would you submit to the roadside? Right? I would if I know. What's my right? The wrong wish to say no. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go after the finish. Yeah. It's voluntary. Yeah. It's voluntary? Okay. Are you refusing? Like, I would like to return it. You would like to refuse? Her whole titty is out. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all see that? Look at that. Right there. <laughs> She's saying I don't want to go to jail. So there we have, she said she's about to call her lawyer. She said, I don't want to go to jail. She was about to call her lawyer. But did y'all see in the beginning, she said it's not enough for her to go to jail. Like it's not enough for me to go to jail, like what she did was not enough for her to go to jail. Sha, hold just out. The lady said, ma'am, you're, and then <laughs> moved it to the side. So I'm going to get into the story. So we saw the video. Now let's get into the story according to RadarOnline.com. Do you know who I am? Watch Glorilla deny being drunk to police officers. But I'm sorry, watch, let's start over. Do you know who I am? Watch Glorilla deny being drunk to police off to police after officers claim to smell booze before DUI arrest. Rapper Glorilla denied being inebriated when an officer pulled her over on Tuesday in Gwinnett County, Georgia, keeping her cool in newly revealed body cam footage obtained by RadarOnline.com. The officer asked Glorilla, real name Gloria Woods, how many drinks she had that day, to which the No More Love hitmaker replied, I'm cool. The officer stated that was not what she asked. Again, questioning how many drinks the rapper had. Glorilla was seen behind the wheel of a black Mercedes Benz after it made a U-turn at a red light, cops say. Not only can I smell alcohol coming from your breath, but I can smell marijuana coming from this car, said the officer, noting they would be searching her vehicle next. Glorilla informed the officer that she had a gun registered to her name in the vehicle, also admitting she had marijuana in her possession, but only in a small amount. The footage then showed Glorilla asking, do you know who I am? The officer says she did not. As their exchange continued, Glorilla withheld her famous name since she felt the officer was picking on her already. She assured the officer she was fine to drive and not drunk before stepping out of the vehicle for the field sobriety test. Now, let's be clear in that in the before she got out, did y'all heard her tell the officer I had to pee so bad I got pee on my <laughs> I got pee on my hands. I mean, that wasn't included in the article, so I just felt it prudent for it to be included. Glorilla refused to do the breathalyzer and was ultimately cuffed, opting to remove her jewelry before the arrest. The arresting officer wrote in the incident report that while chatting with Woods outside of her car, her right breast slipped out from underneath her clothing. The music artist was unable to realize that her breast was visible, so the officer informed her and had to pull her jacket over to cover her chest. The chart-topping performer was charged Tuesday with first offense driving under the influence of alcohol, having an open container of alcohol, and failing to obey a traffic control device. Gwinnett County jail booking records show. 
An associate came to pick up her bins when she was taken into custody, according to police. She was booked into the jail at 6.12 a.m. and released on $2,000 bond at 9.41 a.m. the same day. Glorilla has not yet addressed the addressed the arrest. So Glorilla's out here, y'all, looking like little mama. I don't care what y'all say. I'm sorry. <laughs> she looked like little mama in that picture, even had the lip gloss on and all. So what y'all think? I think Glorilla clearly... It's probably not jail worthy or whatever. The, the offense doesn't mean that she'll probably have to pay a big fine. I wonder if she'll get her license suspended though, because it's her first time. Who knows? All right, y'all let's get into Mr. Kevin Hunter. According to page six, Wendy Williams guardian demands Kevin Hunter returned 112,000 after he was overpaid and divorced. Now it's the same guardian, Sabrina Morrissey that, um, is, yeah, I was going to say conservative, but is the guardian over Wendy's financial affairs. The same one that tried to stop the documentary from being able to air. Remember she went to court like the week it was airing and then the A&E network, like the head honchos went to court and they were allowed to proceed obviously with the documentary. Wendy Williams legal guardian has filed new court documents demanding Kevin Hunter pay back 112 $112,500 in alimony. Sabrina Morrissey claims in court docs that the famed TV show's ex-husband was overpaid for three months and was unjustly enriched by Williams' bank account. So clearly he was getting, what, $112,000, $112,500 divided by three. So he was getting $37,500 a month. Uh, Marcy says that the Wendy Williams show ceased paying the former host in October 2021, but Hunter continued receiving payments until January 2022, which he confirmed. It says, I believe this was largely the result of the fact that the payments had been put on auto on an auto pay function with her account. Morrissey states in the documents, she added the payments go against the express terms of their settlement agreement, which stated that Hunter's payments would cease if his ex-wife's income reduced to less than two times her then yearly income as of February 1st, 2020. By holding onto the funds he was overpaid, he has interfered with Williams' right of possessions to those funds, the documents state. In addition to returning the six-figure sum, Marcy also wants Hunter to pay back the interest and request the court issue a gag order against him to prevent him from speaking to the press or others. Remember, after the documentary, he had a lot to say. The potential harm to Williams is great. Mr. Hunter and his agents have shown their willingness to talk to the press about these issues. The Sun was the first to report the news of Marcy's filing. I think it's interesting that she's thinking about... Um, the interest of Wendy and her well-being. When, when we watched the documentary, Wendy wanted to be with her family and around her family. But according to them, they couldn't get to her. Listen, I know that he filed a suit because he was supposed to be paid money for something else and the judge is basically letting it proceed. But I also understand that that may not have anything necess necessary to do not that may not have anything to do with this particular issue. Those may be two separate issues. If they think they're going to get $112,500 from him, child, you can't get blood from a stone. And what else they said? You can't get blood from a turnip. So we shall see how this plays out. I do hope Miss Morrissey, now that a spotlight has been put on her, uh, guardianship is doing right by Auntie Wendy. I really, truly do. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Ash, uh, Ashley. Lord, what is going on? It's that burger, y'all. Got to my soul. Let's talk about Ashanti and Nelly engaged, expecting first child together. Such a blessing. Ashanti is going to be welcoming a baby, 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 baby. That wasn't Ashanti, right? The article says Ashanti is going to be welcoming a baby, 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 baby. She sings a different song with baby. It's in here. I'm telling you, it's the burger. The foolish singer 43 revealed to Essence that she and Nelly are not only engaged, but they are also expecting their first child together. This new year of my life is such a blessing, full of love, hope, and anticipation, she told the outlet. Motherhood is something that I have looked forward to and sharing this with my family, fiance, and loyal fans who have been so supportive of my career is an amazing experience. Uh, she said, 
She confirmed her pregnancy on Instagram Wednesday with a clip where her mom, Tina Douglas, asked her if she was ready to go on stage for her performance. I'm going to need about nine months, she said, as she showed her mom a positive um, proof pregnancy test. The video ended with the words to be continued. Baby, 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 baby. With a, So Ashanti posted baby, 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 baby with a heart, praying hands and a smiley face, uh, which she also tagged Dilemma. Stars and fans are filled. Stars and fans filled the expecting mom's Instagram comments with sweet messages following her big announcement. Yes, congratulations to my girl, you're the one, commented rapper Cash Doll, who was pregnant with her second child. Period. Heart emoji, fire emoji, commented Tamar Braxton. Congrats, beautiful, with three red hearts, former Real Housewives of Atlanta star Claudia Jordan. So I'm going to say this if she's happy, then I'm happy. You know, she may have wanted kids may not have thought it was in her future, wasn't sure. Now she's having a baby, you know, cause I've seen a lot of comments. Actually, there's this Facebook group that I'm a part of. Yes. So I'm not on there a lot, barely on Facebook, but I do venture over there every now and again, there's certain groups that I'm a part of that I go for information, like just for my own uh, personal stuff or whatever. But this, I don't even know how I was added to this group. It's called black women. But anyway, they posted about Ashanti talking about her being pregnant. And it was so many comments that were like, she's stupid. Um, why she spin the block? He made her wait 10 years, went and had babies with other people. And I'm like, he didn't have any, during, during their breakup, he didn't have any babies with other people. Didn't he already have kids before her? Um, so there was a lot of people saying that basically they don't feel that, she, they feel she's less than smart because they felt like he kept her waiting on a string pretty much. I don't know if I necessarily feel that way. I mean, there is, is, isn't there a chance that they could have broke up, went their separate ways, did whatever. She just never got married, never had a baby, and they got back together, and now that's what she wants to do with him. I don't know, because it could be true. Maybe he did keep her on a string, and we don't know. I, I was just looking at it like couple. we hear of couples breaking up, then years later, them getting back together, and now she gets to have the baby uh, that she may have been wishing for. I don't know. What do y'all think? Do y'all think he had her like a ring on a string just waiting? Or do y'all think they just came together maybe when the time was right for both of them? Y'all let me know y'all thoughts. Let's get into Jeezy. Jeezy is the embodiment of Keisha Cole. I changed my mind. He didn't change his mind. Now he don't want full custody anymore. And I feel like all this back and forth in the court He's doing it to aggravate her. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Remember, I talked about, I think it was last month, how he filed paperwork for the lawyers that were all, that are working with her to not be able to basically fight him on the prenup because they were the same lawyers that approved the pre prenup. But then he took that back. I want to know if, if his lawyer is on retainer and he can file as many motions with the amount that he's paying. You know what I mean? So like, this is my lawyer. I'm paying him X amount of dollars. So if I need to file a hundred motions, I can, it's not extra money because if not, it seems like such a waste of money to be doing all these. And honestly, even beyond money, it's a waste of time. You're wasting the court's time, everybody's time. You're doing all these filings only to take them back. I feel like he's doing it to just get at her, but let's see. Jeezy backtracks full custody request of two-year-old daughter Monica with Jeannie Mai. Jeezy backtracked on requesting full custody of his and Jeannie Mai's two-year-old daughter. Per Fulton County court documents obtained by TMZ, Wednesday, the Put It On rapper is now seeking to split custody of Monica with the former Real co-host. In the new motion, Jeezy alleged he's hardly seen his, his daughter since entering in an... Eh, in the new motion... Jeezy alleged he's hardly seen his daughter since entering an informal custody agreement with his estranged wife in late 2023. The all there hitmaker 46 claimed he took Monica on vacation from March 3rd to March 9th. However, when he sent an assistant to pick up the toddler from his and my shared home for another visit in April, she wasn't there per the docs. Jeezy, born Jay Jenkins, furthered the TV person. Furthered, the TV personality and Monica moved out of the home and he often doesn't know his daughter's whereabouts. He added this violates their informal 
custody agreement. The rapper furthered that my 45 is also keeping their daughter from him because he owns a gun. I didn't mean to say it, but there we are. However, Jeezy insisted he's always owned firearms and Monaco has never been affected by them. Additionally, he alleged he's unable to FaceTime Monaco because his ex has blocked his number. Jeezy has been an active and present father throughout the minor child's life. The docs observed by page six read Jeannie's rash decision to vacate the marital residence and essentially take the minor child away from her father was clearly not in the minor child's best interest. Per the filing, keeping Monica away from Jeezy will detrimentally affect her emotional state. My wasn't immediately available for page six to comment. So he filed initially he filed the motion for full custody because he wasn't seeing Monica per him. He's saying that. He took her on vacation in March for six days. In April, when he went to visit, he was informed that Monica wasn't there. So he's not continuing to fight for full custody. He's now saying he wants joint custody. And I wonder what changed his mind. If you're not seeing her, like what changed his mind? The thought of actually having full-time responsibility of your child, I'm wondering. I don't know. It just seems like Jeannie's been quiet in the press other than the interview she did when, you know, basically she was saying she was kind of like blindsided, but we keep seeing a lot of stuff from Jeezy. So I'm wondering what is really going on there. I saw at one point when they first split that there may be a chance that they would get back together. And I mean, who knows what the future holds, but what, I, what I'm looking at now, it don't look like that's in the cards at all. Y'all that food gave me energy. And now I feel like I'm getting sleepy, but I can't go to sleep. I have too much to do. But anyway, what do y'all think? What do y'all make of Jeezy's constant motions that he's filing? Do y'all think he's doing it to kind of get at her, get under her skin? Or do y'all think maybe he's going off of pure emotion at first and then taking a minute, stepping back and rethinking, saying this actually isn't what I want to do? Because I wonder how much longer, I don't know how long you have to, like how long it takes for a divorce where they live. And I'm just wondering how much longer we'll see all of this back and forth. So y'all, thank y'all so much again for watching. I There is something else I wanted to talk about. And I was trying to think if I should do a separate video about it. You know what? I'm going to just talk about it now. So I posted on my Instagram a video of NECA um, on an interview with The Shade Room. And they asked her, matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up because I want, and I'm only going here because I want to read a comment that was left and just speaks to, sometimes there's certain people who feel like even if they don't belong to a community, they feel like they should still have a voice. I'm going to play this for y'all. This is NECA and y'all probably have seen it, but I clipped just a little bit of it. NECA sitting down with page six, I mean, Lord, page six, with the shade room. And they asked her, who do you think can speak about colorism? Because remember, Wendy said that they weren't the cast to speak about it because they didn't have the range. So the interviewer was basically like, who do you feel like has the range? And this was one of her answers. Make sure the volume is, okay, here we go. Wait. I need to share the screen with y'all because I want y'all to see it also. All right, here we go. And Ken for sure, because she's experienced a lot of colors in, in her life. Mm -hmm. And she's you know talked about it during filming where a lot of people hated her because she was light skinned, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, mistreated her to where she actually didn't want to have light skinned kids. Like she used to pray that she would have dark skinned children mm -hmm. because of the way that she was treated. I think Robin can for sure because she's experienced a lot of colorism in her life mm -hmm. and she's you know talked about it during filming where a lot of people hated her because she was light skinned right mm -hmm. and you know mistreated her to where she actually didn't want to have light skinned kids like she used to pray that she would have dark skinned children mm -hmm. because of the way that she was treated. I so y'all heard that so she feels like Robin can speak to colorism because Robin has been the victim of colorism. And it really annoyed me because I want people to understand there is no reverse colorism. There is not. And 
It's interesting that she said that Robin spoke about it on the show, but I guess they cut it about wanting, spoke about her experience as a light-skinned woman and her praying for dark-skinned children. So I guess they wouldn't have to go through what she went through, which is interesting because Candace said that she prayed that she didn't have light-skinned children. Now, granted, we didn't hear Robin say this, but I do think the reaction now that people are seeing this is interesting. It's a little bit of a different reaction. Um, to what Candace said, but what got me was you have this brown skinned woman on here talking about Robin experienced colorism. And then I was trying to find the, uh, there is a, a tweet that NECA tweeted and then deleted. And I was really trying to find it to show y'all, but she said, uh, reverse colorism exists. Look it up. I was trying to Okay, somebody must have sent it to me in the DMs because I really wanted to pull it up and show y'all. Let me see. Yeah, it's not on here, but her her literal tweet was reverse colorism exists. Look it up. But then she deleted it. So I bring this up because after I posted this snippet of NECA talking about Robin being able to speak to colorism, this was my caption. NECA's interview with The Shade Room, she was asked who she thought had the range to discuss colorism. Robin was one of her answers. I could be wrong, but I don't remember seeing Robin have this discussion on the show. Did production cut it out? And I guess Robin and Candace had similar prayers for their children, but I digress. I had someone get in my comments. And this, again, I'm, I'm going to keep saying, this is one of the things that irritates me the most is people that don't have a voice in the conversation, aren't a part of the community, feel like their voices still need to be heard. And I used to work with women like that. I'm going to say I was the only black one pretty much. Oh, there was a, they, they end up adding another uh, black woman, but on this certain end of the floor when I used to work in corporate America. And they felt like they, like, it was almost like they felt like it was their privilege. It was their right to be able to speak about anything, whether they knew about it or not. So in my comments, this woman, this is a white woman. And she says, light skinned black women in parentheses, my cousin experience colorism as well. Obviously, dark skinned people do also just look at Dominican culture where darker skinned people are openly called slurs. So she just said where dark skinned people are openly called slurs. Then there are light skinned women who are targeted and beat up every day after school. Because they're light skinned, you have to hold space for both sides. So after I took like 19 deep breaths, because what I'm going to read you my response. It was totally, I was getting ready to go totally left, like off the, the grid. And I was like, no. Because in my mind, I'm like, who do you, like, you don't even know nothing about this topic. Like you're a white woman who knows nothing at all, nothing about this topic. But then you come on here thinking you have something to say about it. So I responded. I'm very aware how light-skinned people can be treated poorly because they are light-skinned. As a Black woman with Black family and Black friends of all different shades, I'm aware. So holding space for both isn't an issue for me. However, we should be using correct terminology. By definition, and this is words matter, but so do their meanings. By definition, colorism is the preference of lighter skin over dark skin. Prejudice, prejudice a prejudice against dark-skinned people. That's in the definition. It's specific to preferring light skin over dark skin. So there is no reverse colorism. However, like I said, I do know light skin people have been treated badly because of the simple fact that they are light skin. One of my closest friends. Um, I didn't put that part in there. I'm just telling y'all. And I said, which is not cool and okay either. So I was letting, I was saying that to say, I don't believe in just throwing words on people, especially if you don't know the meaning. But here you are as a white woman coming to my page telling me about your one light-skinned cousin that I need to hold space for because they've experienced colorism as you're talking about dark-skinned people being called slurs in their culture. She responds back, see, I didn't know that. And I was just telling my friend today 
how I wish there was a place to go to learn about colorism. You don't know, you knew you didn't know, but still felt like your voice had to be heard in a conversation that had absolutely nothing to do with you. She said, I have seen colorism firsthand. What do you call it when a lighter skinned woman is treated poorly due to the color of their skin? I legitimately don't know. Where can someone go to get this info? Someone said to her, you didn't know, but yet in your first comment, you said what you said with your chest. Why? That's very dangerous. Also replace colorism by racism and you'll get the answers you're looking for. Somebody did say it's called prejudice, which is part of the definition of colorism. It's just color colorism is specific to prejudice towards darker skin people versus lighter skin people. So light skin people don't experience colorism, but they can experience um, prejudice. And I had commented back to somebody and I want to make it very clear today for any listener, uh, viewer of all hues. I am not by any way diminishing anything that lighter skin people who have been bullied, beat up, made fun of because they're lighter skinned. I'm not diminishing that in any way. I was posting that video, people to comment, we're talking about colorism. This woman then comes into, a white woman comes into my comments to tell me that there is reverse colorism when she doesn't even know what colorism, colorism is. And there were some black people in the comments saying that there was reverse colorism too. My thing is just like, I don't just throw out the blanket statement. This person's racist. This person's racist. This person's racist. Because everybody's not. Some people are prejudiced. Some people are bigots. Some people stereotype, right? And I feel like we need to make sure we know what we're speaking about when we use these terminologies, especially if we want other people to understand, people that don't experience it, right? My issue that just pissed me off was the fact that, okay, and I think because I've experienced that with white women that I've had, to, and even non-black women that aren't white and had to be like, hold up. You can't speak about this because you know nothing about it. And I find, especially at the height of uh, the George Floyd and everything, with George Floyd and everything that was going on, especially in the Bravo world and Bravo, a movement, not a race in America, movement, not a moment. I encountered a lot of white women that wanted to, he that wanted to learn, but also speak. So it was, I want to be here to be, I want to learn. I want to be educated. I want to learn, but also feeling like they had to have a voice in a situation that they wanted to learn about. That doesn't make sense in any area, in education. If somebody's teaching you something, questions, yes. But that's like me trying to teach the teacher while admitting I don't know nothing about what she's trying to teach me, but I just feel like my voice has to be heard. And that's one thing that I that can really make me angry is when I see non-black women, especially, I mean, men too, but women, especially feeling like they just have to have a voice and everything instead of shutting up and listening and learning. I know when it comes to other cultures, that's what I do. And if I, I, I'm thankful to my friends of other cultures who have been open to me asking questions, not me telling them about their culture because I'm not a part of it or their community. Right. So that just really, really, really annoyed me. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Usa, get that off my chest. And then I'm looking at NECA crazy. You tweeting about reverse colorism, then deleting it. She said, there is such a thing as reverse colorism. Look it up. Why'd you uh, delete your tweet, NECA? Y'all think she coming back? Because then she do enough. She's on the interview circuit. And she did an interview and the interviewer asked her, was she coming back? And she said, you guys have to follow me because I have some things coming up. So do y'all think that NECA's coming back? I know I asked this before, but I wanted to ask again. Do y'all think that she should get another chance? There's a lot of people that come from the school of thought that unless they're just so terrible, all housewives should be given at least a second season so we can really learn more about them. So what do y'all think? I think I said it in another video. I don't have a problem if she doesn't come back. And if she does come back, she's just back.
because I'm not even sure where I'm going to be at with the season. You know, next year we'll have to see, of course, the cast and all that kind of stuff. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Uh, sorry for the rant at the end, but it just it just lights me on fire. When people feel like they got to have a voice in everything that they don't even know nothing about. But y'all, I love y'all so much. Thank you again so much for supporting me. And thank you for indulging my rants and um, for listening to me rant, me and this good old little hamburger from Five Guys with barbecue sauce, ketchup, and A1. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.